Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today I'm here to do my May wrap up And I'm so excited to let you know that in the month of May I read 19 books I had a really great reading month and I read my favorite book that I've read so far this year in the month of May Woo! Yeah, as I said, you know, it was an absolutely phenomenal reading month for me. I had seven five-star books, like what the heck, seven. And then I had six four-star books, four three-star books, and two two-star books. 13 of the books that I read this month were either four or five stars. Like that is rare and that is exciting for me. And then as far as genres go, I had three horror books that I read this month, four thrillers, seven romances, oh my gosh, two non-fictions, one historical fiction, question mark, and then one young adult sci-fi. The genres were kind of all over the place and I feel like that's because of the different videos that I was attempting to do during the month of May. This month I had a few reading vlogs that I did that I was super excited about. Like I started the month with this reading Japanese thriller and horror books video and I read so many incredible books during this video. It was so much fun. I also did another romance reading vlog this month that was also super fun. I did a Patreon exclusive reading vlog for the book Book Lovers by Emily Henry and that was also really fun. I also included a mac and cheese recipe that me and Rachel make in a lot of my vlogs in that video. And then I also did a reading vlog where Rachel picked my TBR which is why I read some genres that I don't normally read. I was reading things a little bit out of my comfort zone and so yeah I'll have all of those reading vlogs linked down below if you missed any of them. The first book I read this month was actually Shiver by Junji E2 and this is one that I checked out of my library. I actually had quite a bit of library reads this month which is amazing you know because I love supporting my local library um, but this was actually my very first ever experience with manga and it was such a wild experience. This book is actually a collection of nine different short stories, which I didn't fully realize that going into this book until I was actually reading it. And I love that so much. Like lately I've just developed this really big interest in reading short stories, especially in the horror genre. I feel like horror is a genre that really thrives with like the short story format. So I absolutely loved this. There were definitely some short stories in this book that stood out to me more than others. Like there are some that I still think about on a daily basis that I'm like, that is disgusting and like the amount of uh you know body horror and just like grotesque like visual things you know because it's manga so there's a lot of drawings you know like you see a lot of things with your eyes and it was freaking intense and it was so good i think i gave this collection a four out of five overall because you know as i said it's kind of hard to rate a collection in its entirety because there are some of these stories in here that are absolute five star incredible short stories for me and then there are some that are just kind of like forgettable like you can skip them you know so it's kind of a mixed bag but if you want to see my thoughts on each individual short story, I recommend watching my reading vlog. And then in that video, I also read Battle Royale, which like, holy shit, this has got to be like one of my favorite books that I read this year. This was a five-star book for me and I did not expect that in any way, shape, or form because this is a book that doesn't really sound like something I'd be like super interested in just because the premise of it kind of gives me like, I don't know, like Hunger Games vibes and I nev I've never been the biggest Hunger Games fan. But this book is basically about this class of junior high students in Japan and they are taken to a deserted island where as part of a ruthless authoritarian program they are provided arms and forced to kill each other until there's only one survivor left standing. So I mean when you read that premise it does sound very Hunger Games but also kind of like Squid Games too and so I just kind of went into this with an open mind not really knowing what to expect and I did not think when I started this that I would end up loving it as much as I did like holy shit this book was so intense it was so engaging and like this book is literally over 600 pages and I just flew through it in like two or three days because I could not put it down like I could not get enough of it I just felt so connected to these characters and I just feel like this book was written so well like the action was written so well it was just very intense I was on the edge of my seat the whole time my god I just I loved it I loved it so much like I could see myself rereading this in the future like the end of it almost had me crying and there was a really good twist at the end of this book like I thought for sure that the ending would be super predictable and cheesy because I'm like okay it's obvious you know what's gonna happen but no I was like I was freaking shook. Like, I was surprised and I just loved it so much. Like, who freaking knew Battle Royale? Freaking amazing lives up to the hype. During that video, I also read Uzumaki, which is another manga from Junji E2. And this one, oh my gosh, I can't decide whether I like Shiver 
or Uzumaki more. I feel like they're kind of similar for me. But the thing about Uzumaki is that it's not a short story collection. It's actually, you know, this story about this town that's dealing with this curse of spirals. And it sounds so strange when I say it like that, but this book was so good. And like, I swear, after you read this book, you just start noticing spirals like everywhere and you feel like you're going crazy, you know? But this book, it was looking to be a five-star book for me for like the first two-thirds of it and then I feel like somewhere in the, like the last third of the book it just gets really repetitive and like things start happening over and over and over again and I was just like okay like let's just get to the point. So because of that I ended up rating this one a four out of five as well. It wasn't like the perfect five-star book for me but I had such a fun time reading this book. Like it was literally so disturbing, so disgusting. It was getting under my skin. Like I kept showing like you know the, pi the pictures in this book to my family members and they would be like ew what the fuck like what the fuck is wrong with you like why are you reading that and like these books that you know Junji E2 writes like they are not for the faint of heart okay like these are some gruesome like graphic disgusting kind of like horror manga you know but it's so good oh my god it's so good Another book that I read for that video is Penance, and this is from the same author as Confessions, which is why I was really excited to get to this one. So this one is a thriller that follows these four women who all experienced this trauma when they were younger. They're ex they experienced like one of their friends dying. And so it's interesting because in each chapter, we get the point of view of one of the other women, like each, each of the four women get their own chapter and they kind of talk about what's going on in their present day lives. And then they flash back to, you know, when the events happened, when their friend died, and it's interesting because they all kind of perceive things in a different way and it's really interesting because even though I do think the writing style is a little it's like a tad bit repetitive you know because you are reading about a lot of the same scenes just from the perspective of different characters but I also think it's really interesting because you learn a little bit more information with each chapter and you get to learn something new from each perspective that you're reading from and I also think this one is surprising like towards the end of this book there were some things that I was shocked by that I did not see coming and so I would definitely recommend this book for fans of confessions I feel like it has a very similar writing style in the sense that it has these long chapters all from like one perspective and then you get another chapter that's from like a slightly different perspective but it's like similar but it was good I had a good time reading this one this was another four out of five for me I really enjoyed it and then the next book I read was also for that video I read Tokyo Ever After because this is a young adult contemporary and it's a romance and it's one that I wanted to read during that video because lately when I've been you know doing these kind of videos of reading thriller and horror books from another country I try to include like one you know young adult contemporary just to like lighten up the mood and this one was so freaking cute it's very like princess diaries vibes very like what a girl wants vibes basically about this young girl who is living in America and she's Japanese and she has never known her dad her whole life and then one day she finds out that her dad is like literally a prince in Japan and so it's kind of about her you know going to meet her dad and this whole thing with her dad and getting you know open to this whole new world that she never knew and you know, like I said, it's very, very cute, very soft, very Princess Diaries. Like it was just giving me all of those feels and it was just a good time. So I gave this one four out of five stars as well. The next book that I read this month is The Romantic Agenda. Holy crap. This is another one of my favorite books that I've read this year. This is a romance book that has an asexual main character named Joy. On the back here too, it says 30 flirty and asexual. Joy is secretly in love with her best friend, Malcolm. And this book is really interesting because it's almost like one of those romance books where it's like he likes her but then she likes him and then he likes her and it's just like this whole like love square love triangle love hexagon thing but this book was uh you know the most relatable for me because it involves an asexual main character I just really connected with this book um, because if you didn't know I actually do identify as asexual and so this representation in a romance book really just meant the whole world to me and so this book was pretty much an easy five out of five stars for me like I'm still thinking about this book a lot you know some of the conversations that Joy has with her friend Malcolm towards the end of this book just freaking hit me so hard like and I feel like even if you aren't asexual I feel like this could still be a very enjoyable romance for you but I feel like especially if you think you might identify as asexual I would highly recommend reading this because you'll probably see so much of yourself in Joy and it just meant a whole lot to me like this book was everything their friendship was so cute like Joy and Malcolm 
were adorable. I just had a really great time reading this. I have nothing bad to say about it. Five out of five stars. I adore it. And then I also read The Roughest Draft. Um, these are both books that I read for my romance reading vlog that I did this month. This is one that I've been wanting to read for a few months now. It came out in January and I was seeing some mixed reviews about it so I was kind of nervous going into it. But this book was so freaking good. It was so freaking cute. In this book, we're following these two writers who, you know, they had written all these books together and they were very successful when they were writing together. But then something happened between them and they're no longer writing together. And now he's trying to publish books on his own, but they're not doing as well. And she's pretty much stopped writing altogether. And so their agents and like their teams get together and they're like, we need you to write another book together because that is the success for both of your careers. And so then they have to go back to like where they used to write their previous books together and kind of you know try to write together again and they have all this like shared history you know because it's not like they were ever really together they just have this connection you know they just have this thing this unspoken thing between them and this book was just so good I don't know it was so juicy it was so like it was kind of forbidden and this book was just really good like I just really loved the chemistry between these two characters I love how they were like writing scenes together but they it was like this unspoken thing like they were writing writing things that they wish they could say almost like it was just so beautiful and like so romantic and I ended up giving this one four out of five stars like I really enjoyed it and then the next book that I read this month was Lease on Love which was another absolute winner of a romance for me like I swear I just read so many good books this month you know we follow this girl Sadie who's living in New York she's working her job and then she thinks she's gonna get this promotion when her boss's son like out of nowhere just gets the promotion just because he's the boss's son and so she kind of like cusses them out yelling at them loses her job they literally fire her she goes out with her friends and she thinks that she's on like a dating app but she's actually on a roommate's app and she like connects with this guy and then she goes on what she thinks is a blind date she realizes that it was a roommate's app and then it becomes a situation where they become roommates and they're living in brooklyn new york and um this book was god tier to me for a few different reasons um i mean first of all love that it takes place in new york second of all oh my god their romance was literally so cute like i adore Jack so freaking hard like he's adorable and in this book he's going through you know a lot of grief like he's recently lost his parents and there's a lot of grief that his character is experiencing during this book and he's just trying to you know open up himself again to like somebody and it's just be it's beautiful and then also I found Sadie to be super awesome and super relatable and I know a lot of people that have given this book negative reviews say that Sadie's really annoying and that they don't like her but I personally found her to be really relatable and so I don't know what that says about me but I really enjoyed this one. I gave this book five stars. Like, this is genuinely a romance that I want to reread again. Like, I could see myself rereading this again before the end of the year. Like, that is how much I enjoyed my time with this. And I do own this book, if you're wondering. I'm currently lending it to my mom to read right now because that's what you do. And then the last book I read during that romance reading vlog was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, which was one of the book of the month picks for this month. This is one that I was nervous about, you know, because with this author, this is like, I think the fourth book now that I've read from this author. And with her books, I just never know, you know, like they usually end up being pretty okay. But then by the ending, I find them to be really disappointing. But I can by far say that this is her best book so far. And that if you're interested in reading any books by this author, let it be this one. Because <laughs> this one's so great. You know, we're following this woman named Alexis. She's in her late 30s and she works like in the city as an ER doctor. And then it's about her romance with this country boy. And his name is Daniel and he's like 26 years old. He's literally 10 years younger than her. And this is about kind of how they meet. It's a little bit insta-love at the beginning, like I'm not gonna lie, or not insta-love, but insta-lust. Like they just get together right away, they're hooking up. But then, oh my gosh, shortly after that, um, their romance just really starts to develop and they start to develop these feelings for each other. But it's so tough because this is like one of those perfect books where it's like they come from different worlds and they just don't, like their worlds don't match, you know? Like she's literally 10 years older than him, living in the city, living a completely different life. Because of the way their worlds are, it just doesn't make sense for them to be together but they want to be together like they just have really genuine feelings for each other and this book was goddamn beautiful okay it was beautiful um i will warn you though this book is a lot darker and heavier than you might think like i would give you some trigger warnings for abuse like physical abuse emotional abuse like there are some 
heavy things happening in this book that I don't think I've seen a lot of other reviewers warn people about because I was like, oh my god, like some of the things in this book happening were like really heavy on my heart and I was like, fuck. But also this book was just fucking beautiful. It was fucking beautiful. I was crying at the end. It just got to me. Like all of it just got to me. It was beautiful. I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. Like it was phenomenal. Highly recommend it. <laughs> Next book that I read this month was You've Reached Sam. I actually read this as a buddy read with my friend Mikay um, because we were both wanting to read this one. I actually buddy read uh, Battle Royale with Mikay and my other friend Marcy as well. So me and McKay just had a few buddy reads this month. But this one is a young adult contemporary and I'll say this right away. I just found this book to be okay. I was kind of going into this book thinking it would probably be a new favorite or something just because I see so many people hyping this book up and so many people saying that this is like one of the saddest books they've ever read. And so I think I just went into it with a little too high of expectations. In this story, we're following this young girl who her boyfriend Sam has recently passed away and she's kind of dealing with the grief of that. And then one night she tries to call his phone and he picks up and it's about how she's able to kind of like communicate with him after he's gone. And you know, just even saying that out loud, like it sounds like this story is gonna be so like emotional and heavy and it definitely is a heavy kind of story. But at the same time, like, I don't know, I found it hard to connect with this main character. I mean, I know everyone grieves in different ways and I'm not like trying to judge however she was in this book, but I just found it kind of hard to connect with her. And at times I found her to just be a little bit frustrating with the way that she was like dealing with her friendships and things like that. There was also a few things in this book that I thought were like just a tad cheesy. Like, there were a few times in this book where I considered DNFing it just because I didn't feel like I was really connecting with the characters and I feel like this book was reading super YA, which I know is like, can you even really critique that? You know, because it's like, this is a young adult book. So it's intended for young adults. So what am I talking about? But I feel like every now and then, you know, you read young adult books that can be read by adults and it's fine. But sometimes I read young adult books that feel so YA, like they're just intended for teenagers. And I feel like this is one of those books for me, at least in my opinion. Like I'm sure there are adults out there who did enjoy this one, but I don't know. There was just something about it. I just wasn't connecting with it. But then by the end, it did make me a little misty eyed. Okay. Like the ending got to me. It was a beautiful ass ending. And I can see why people really love this book. For me, it was a three out of five. It, it's not something super special and that I'm going to remember like forever, but it was an enjoyable read. And the next book that I read this month was Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Ooh, ooh. So I was really excited for this book. It was like one of my most anticipated books of the year because even though I wasn't the biggest fan of Beach Read, um, People We Meet on Vacation ended up being one of my favorite books of last year. And so I'm so excited to let you know that this book did not disappoint. I mean, if you want to hear all of my fangirly thoughts about this book, I literally did an entire Patreon exclusive reading vlog dedicated to this book. That's like 47 minutes long. Like it is a freaking long ass vlog, but this book was just everything. Okay. I love this book for so many reasons. We follow this main character named Nora and she's kind of this like bad bitch. You know, she's like a literary agent. She's just like, people know her as like a shark. She's like this icy queen, you know, very independent, doesn't give a fuck. And then she also has this sister in this book and her sister asks if she can take her on this trip to this really small town because her sister is going to be having this baby soon and she feels like she's not going to have as much time to hang out with her after the baby's born. And so she's like, yeah, let's take this sister trip. They make this cute little checklist of all the things that they want to do on this trip together. There are just so many, okay, there's so many things that I love about this book. Like I love how much, you know, our main protagonist girl, Nora, I love that she works in like a book job. Like she has a bookish job. I love that she loves New York City as much as she does. Like she's such a city girl through and through and I freaking love that. Also her banter with Charlie in this book is some of my favorite shit that I've ever read. Like I felt so giddy and so alive when I was reading their banter. I honestly love so much, you know, the fact that Charlie also works in the book world. You know, he's a book editor, she's a literary agent and they often have to like work together on the same projects. And I just, oh my God, I love it. I loved it so much. It's all, it's kind of like hate to love, but not like super super passionate hate. It's just kind of like they don't get along and they have really good banter because they don't get along very well. This book was everything. It was so cute. I love the vibes of it. It does feel very like small town vibes for most of the book because most of the book is when they're on this trip to this small town. I do still think that People We Meet on Vacation is more my favorite from Emily Henry, but I still need to think about it more. I need to give it time to sit. But this book was a five out of five for me. I just freaking adored it, loved it so much. Their banter was everything. All right, and then the next three books that I read this month were all books that 
that my sister picked for me to read off of my TBR shelf. Um, so the first one that she picked was The Cartographers, which this was a really fun kind of thriller, almost kind of like magical realism book. You know, we're following this girl who one day she discovers, you know, these maps because, okay, she works in maps, you know, cartography, maps, yes. And so one day her dad passes away and she goes into his office and she finds these maps in his desk that they had had their biggest argument of their life over seven years ago and she actually stopped talking to her dad over this fight because he said these maps are stupid and useless and you should just throw them away they don't mean anything and she was like arguing with him and now that he's gone and dead she finds these maps in his desk and she's like um what the heck like what do these maps mean why was he holding on to these and it's, so it's kind of this like mysterious thrilling story of her trying to figure out what these maps mean and how like why they're important and why her dad would be trying to hide them from her and so this story feels very you know it compares itself to Joe Hill and V.E. Schwab and I would definitely agree like that is definitely how the writing felt to me. This book was a tough one you know because there are some things that I really enjoyed about this book and there are some things that I definitely could have done without. I mean I really loved the aspect with the maps and like discovering the mystery behind what the maps mean in this book. I thought that was really interesting but I also wasn't a huge fan of the way this was written because we would get a lot of like flashback chapters to all these different characters that I was just like okay I don't care like I'd rather just find out about this from the protagonist and I just wasn't a huge fan of the way this was written but I think the concepts in this book are really strong. I just don't think that this book lived up to its full potential of what it could have been so for that reason it was a three star for me. And then for that video I also read The People We Keep and in this story we're following this young girl named April in New York in 1994 and she's kind of like living in this trailer park with her dad. Her dad is kind of this like you know abusive piece of shit and so one day she just decides to pack up her shit and leave and it's kind of about her you know being out on the road when she's like either 16 or 17 years old and just about her trying to make it and trying to survive. I feel like this is a book that I would have, uh, you know, gravitated towards a lot like five years ago. You know, I feel like I really don't read books like this super often anymore. So I feel like my reading taste has just changed so much in these last few years, you know, but this was really something I probably would have loved had I read it like five years ago. But I absolutely loved part one of this book. Part one is almost 200 pages long and it was just so interesting to see this young girl, April, just trying to make it on her own and it had very like small town vibes you know it's very like found family vibes like she finds her own community she finds her way in the world i just wasn't a fan of where this book ended up going i was really on board with april and really supporting her through the beginning of this book i was like come on like do your thing like let's go but then after part two i just really lost interest i found the book to be super repetitive after part two i just felt like the same things were happening over and over and over again and nothing was getting resolved it felt very almost like slice of life in that way and i was just getting bored and then all also, the ending was just so cheesy that I was like, okay, really? Like, what the heck? So I ended up giving this one three stars, which sucks because at the beginning, I was genuinely feeling like this might be a new favorite in part one. And the third book that I read for that video of Rachel picking my TBR was The Ones We're Meant to Find. And this one is actually a young adult sci-fi book, which I know you would not assume that from this, you know, absolutely gorgeous cover. But this one's this young adult sci-fi. We're following these two sisters. One of them wakes up on the shore of an abandoned island and she has like no idea how she got there no memories like the only thing that she knows is that she has a sister and then we do follow the other sister's point of view named Casey she's living in this eco city and there are some things that I really enjoyed about this book you know I was so nervous going into this because I had seen my friends all giving this book really low ratings so I was like oh god like no I'm so nervous now I saw a lot of people you know saying that their biggest critique of this book was that it was too confusing which I would definitely agree with because especially like someone like me who doesn't read sci-fi super often often I found Casey's chapters to be pretty confusing like a lot of her chapters talking about like the eco cities and like the way their environment is now was very confusing for me like I was finding it hard to follow and I was it was hard for me to keep up but I really did enjoy C's chapters you know we get her chapters of waking up on this abandoned island there's all these questions there's all this mystery and I don't know I was really invested in her chapters and then I think towards the end of this book you know there was a pretty big plot twist that I didn't see coming that really made the story like slightly more interesting for me like I don't know after that plot twist I was pretty invested in trying to figure out like what was going on and how that could be possible I don't know like this book was kind of a struggle because for most of the book I felt like I was going to give it two stars because I felt so lost most of the time and so confused so by the end I bumped up my rating to three stars 
which I know still sounds like it's low, but for the most part, I wasn't really enjoying this until the end. So I'm glad that I ended up enjoying it more than I originally was expecting to. And then the next book that I read this month was my book troop pick for the month of May, which was The Haunting of Ashburn House. If you would like to hear all of my thoughts, I just did a live show with my friends Ashley and Hannah. So I'll have that linked down below if you want to check it out. But sadly, um, this book just was not for me. I didn't really consider the fact that cozy horror was a thing. Like, I, I don't know. I would never describe horror as cozy, but now that I've read something that's considered cozy horror, I guess I understand what that means. And I just really don't think that cozy horror is my thing. Um, but basically in this story, we're just following this girl named Adrian, and she, you know, gets this house because her great aunt passes away and leaves this house behind for her. And so it's about how she's going to be going to this small town and inheriting this house. But there's all kinds of freaky shit happening in this house, you know, and she lives there alone with her cat. And, you know, there's no mirrors on the walls. And there's like these scratches of like notes in the walls and on the freaking table. And, but yeah, I feel like my main, uh, you know, issue with this book is the fact that the main character is just so frustrating in this book. And she just has absolutely no survival skills whatsoever. And she just constantly makes bad decision after bad decision. And, you know, as much as I did, like there were some, you know, spooky moments in this book that I enjoyed. There was some kind of more like graphic gory writing that I enjoyed. But for the most part, I thought the ending of this book was incredible incredibly lame and just like what the fuck like none of it made any sense like there were so many contradictions and like plot holes and things that just did not add up that I could just not enjoy myself like I was just so frustrated with this character with like the story the writing I just really wasn't a fan of the writing it felt very like cheesy and cliche and I think I've just discovered that Darcy Coates is not for me I think I'm giving this book a 1.5 out of 5 stars the next book that I read this month was Something Wilder by Christina Lauren I was actually sent an art copy of this and so she kind of works at this you know place where people can come on tours and they can and try to find the treasure and all that kind of stuff you know and so then there's this guy Leo that she used to know in her past okay she knew him when she was younger and now he's coming to the place to do a tour with a bunch of his boys you know and this book was just all over the place you know like it was very strange for me um on the back of this book here it says when the trip goes horribly and hilariously wrong things go really wrong and it's almost to the point where it's like uncomfortable for them to continue after what happens like i don't know there's just so many things about this book that i do not understand like it's just so bizarre to me and so strange I also like wasn't the biggest fan of their romance because I feel like it's just one of those situations where like they just had the tiniest little miscommunication and they stopped talking to each other for years because of it and it's like literally if one of them had just reached out to clarify what they meant or to clarify anything we wouldn't even have this issue of like them not talking to each other and it's just frustrating you know like I feel like this book was trying to be more like fun and lighthearted and I just, I guess I didn't care that much about the romance. I didn't care that much about this like national treasure journey they were on, but I ended up giving this a two out of five stars. It just really wasn't very good. And it's sad because like, I love Christina Lauren, but like, but I feel like this has got to be one of my least favorite books from them, which makes me sad. Next book that I read was We Were Dreamers by Simu. And I'm so excited that I finally got my hands on this book. If you didn't know, Simu is the actor in the Marvel movies who plays Shang-Chi. He's just like an up and coming actor that I've been really interested in lately. I'm like following him on Instagram. I'm like trying to follow his career, you know, because he's just somebody that I really admire and respect in Hollywood. And so um, I was so excited to hear that he had this memoir coming out, kind of like a nonfiction about his life you know and kind of talking about his childhood and his story about you know immigrating to Canada from China and kind of like his story of like how he made it in Hollywood and how he overcame all of these challenges in his life and this book was just so beautiful it was so special um, I highly recommend listening to the audiobook if you're choosing to read this book just because you know he narrates it himself and his voice is pretty freaking lovely if I do say so myself and uh, yeah I don't know I just really enjoyed this book and it's always like so inspiring to me you know when you hear about all of the hardships that somebody had to go through in order to become you know as successful as they are today and it's just it's always really inspiring to me and really motivating but it was very moving it just moved me a lot and by the ending I literally was like crying I was listening to this audiobook while I was driving and by the ending I had tears streaming out of my eyes I was like this was beautiful so yeah I gave this five out of five stars I really freaking enjoyed it and I highly recommend checking it out if you're a fan of Simu. The next book that I read this month was actually um, a library 
graphic novel um, and this one is what to do when I'm gone and this one is a non-fiction graphic novel and it's kind of about a mother's advice to her daughter for like what to do after she's gone and this was freaking beautiful um, it was kind of you know an emotional thing for me because you know I'm really close to my mom and so any kind of discussion about what I would do when my mom's not there anymore is just like emotional in general for me but I think this was a really beautiful graphic novel it was short and sweet yeah I ended up giving this one a four out of five the only reason why I ended up knocking off a star is because there's a lot of random like recipes thrown in throughout this book and it just kind of felt a little bit out of place like I don't know it would kind of pull me out of it a little bit hey and then the last book that I read this month is probably my favorite book that I've read so far this year like I still need to sit on it obviously and think about it but I can confidently say that this is probably my favorite book that I read this year if not in my top three because it's notes on an execution this book just hit me on a whole nother level okay this book is stunning this book I actually have to thank my friend Katie for even motivating me to read this in the first place because when I was on reading sprints with her she was like hey would you want to like read this book with me for my book club on Patreon next week and I was like I mean yeah sure and then she freaking was so kind and sent me the audiobook on Libro so like we all know that I like love having the audiobook to help me get through books so that was so kind I literally just started this book and I only got 30% of the way into the audiobook before I hit pause on that mofo and bought the book immediately online and got it shipped to my house so that I could annotate it because this book is phenomenal and this book is a mystery it's kind of like a slow burn mystery kind of literary fiction writing style in this book we're following from the point of view of this serial killer named Ansel who is is sitting on death row like he's literally counting down the hours basically until he gets executed and so we get his point of view in this book but his point of view is so unique because it's written in second person so it's really kind of eerie you know and really kind of creepy because it almost feels like you're in his head when you're reading his point of views which is just freaking strange but something that I think makes this book really unique and really cool is that we also get the point of view of several different women throughout his lives that have had a big impact on his life or that have kind of you know seen him grow and change through time. There's also a lot of discussion about the multiverse in this book, you know, and there's a lot of discussion about how is it the choices that we make in life that really shape who we are and who we are capable of being. There's just a lot of really great fascinating discussion in this book that I absolutely love. Like this is one of the most thought-provoking books that I've ever read and I think that that's what really makes it one of my all-time favorite books because I felt like my own opinions on things were challenged, you know? Like it really made me think about things and I just love that so freaking much. And you know, this idea that like if there's a version of you out there who had a very different experience in their childhood and grew up a different way, would you be capable of doing things that you could not imagine you would do in this life? You know, like there's just a lot of discussion about like is it your life circumstances that kind of shape who you are and who you eventually become as a human and I think not only are those discussions really interesting and fascinating to me but there's also just in general a lot of really good discussion about the death penalty in this book and whether or not that's ethical or like what that really looks like or the way that we kind of glorify serial killers like there's a lot of really great discussion revolving around those things in this book that I could talk about this book for hours like I literally talked my mom's ear off last night talking about this book and I am doing a live show on Katie's Patreon uh, to discuss this book. It'll probably be up by the time this video goes up, so I'll have that linked down below if you're wanting to watch it. But yeah, this book just really got to me. It's so fucking good. Easy five out of five. I want to reread this book immediately. And it does kind of remind me of one of my other favorite books, Long Bright River. It just has a very similar, you know, kind of literary mystery slow burn writing style that I just absolutely love. Like, I eat this shit up. All right, so those are all of the books that I read in the month of May. You know, as I said, Said, I had a phenomenal reading month. Like I would be surprised if I had another month in this year where I read as many five star new favorite books in one month that I did with this month. Like I don't think I can top it. You know, I don't think I can. So yeah, May has just been fantastic. I would love to know how many books did you read in the month of May? What was the best book that you read in the month of May? What was your least favorite book that you read in the month of May? I always hate it, you know, when my least favorite book of the month ends up being my book troop pick for the month. But you know, that's just the way it is sometimes. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.